All right, welcome back to another episode of Underground Podcast with our guest. Uh, no, I, I'm gonna be honest. I know, cringe. There's no guest this time. Obviously, we have departed from Zach and Howard, as I said in the last episode, and we're going solo podcast this time. Something you haven't seen, yeah. So for that, hit that subscribe button because we're going to be talking about some interesting stuff today. The topic is going to be on small YouTubers. It's going to be real. Uh, and guess what? If you comment in saying why do you wear, why are you still wearing a hat in a video, voila, I can finally take it off because I've had a haircut. I haven't had a, I, for some reason. I normally have a, a haircut every. I have a trim every two weeks. Go to my barbers, have it, or maybe even once every week. So I, for videos, so I, I look decent, half decent, all right? You know, comment down below uh, how many times you have your haircut. But for once. I just left it so long because I don't know. I thought, why not? I, just, I think I just couldn't be bothered. I've been busy, but you know, I can finally the hat. The hat's gone. All right. So R.I.P. Hat in the comments. We got T here. Quick shout out as well. And as, as I'm saying, I you, I love this pod, doing these podcast episodes because it's just real. It's raw. It's none. It's like the behind the scenes. It's not like this shouting over enthusiastic uh, version of myself in Zingy. Uh, but obviously, I you know I do enjoy that side too. But Guyland chocolates, I want to like rumble a bit of a bit of uh, controversy in the comments or debate. But I think these would have to be my favourite chocolates because it's a mixture between like a normal cheap chocolate and a really luxurious one. Belgian chocolates, Guyland or Gillian. Uh, I'm probably saying it's so wrong. Wrong, yeah, right. But it's probably it's, 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 it's chocolate, chocolate seashells essentially. Uh, probably one of the best in the world. All right, okay, enough tangent and all that stuff into the underground podcast topic which is small YouTubers. I've got a couple of notes on my phone, you know, so I'm gonna read through some of them. But I first wanna say any YouTuber or non YouTuber out there, regardless, this I, I think you'll be very interested in today's episode. Uh, we're gonna be talking about small YouTubers in particular and the struggles that we face. Only you watching this video you might face and you know uh, I wanna say first of all if you're going into YouTube for me, you have to go into it, you've got a nosedive into it, oh, give it your 100% because I've had times, especially last year, even, I mean I stepped the game up a little bit last year, but last year and you know, years before, I mean I've been doing this since 2010, you know, um, so I guess I have both ends of the spectrum of doing it for happiness and then, you know, some people doing it nowadays for clout and money, obviously, but, you know, I started way back when and... It was it. It was just. It was. I wasn't going into it fully. I was just doing it because it was. It was fun, and you should always do it because it's fun. But if you're something you want to pursue and you want to do every, you got to wake up. Like I wake up every day, and I'm. Ha I wake up, and I try to. Be, even if it's I'm stressful, I still wake up with a positive mindset that I'm gonna get five videos done today. Bam, 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 bam. Shoot the videos, and edit them, or if you, I mean, if you have the money, give it to editor. I, I don't. I definitely do not do that because I don't have the money at the moment. Um, but you know, yeah, do your thing. No matter how, you got a structure as well. Planning is very important, which we're gonna move on to later in the episode. Uh, but yeah, starting YouTube. Obviously, it can be scary if you haven't started YouTube. For these people, uh, take note now. Clip this if you want. Yeah, um, put it on Twitter now. I'm joking. Uh, you can tweet me. Also, follow us on my social media. So, subtle plug in there. Uh, but if you're starting YouTube, the first thing. You mean I've, you can watch hundreds, thousands, millions of videos like I used to? How to get big on YouTube? How to grow a channel? How to grow reviews? At the end of the day, it's the number one thing that most of them say that is right, and the key point is just do it. And that's the same thing as me. Like you can talk the talk, but if you're not gonna walk the walk, and you're just thinking, oh, I'm gonna wait till you know, I'm just like have time in the summer. No, just literally today. Even if you're busy, make your first video. Even if it's off a toaster, like a really bad camera. I mean, not literally a toaster because it won't be able to film that. You know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, I want to get some more a guests on the podcast that us other small YouTubers as well to talk, to talk with to get to see their mindset on it because I know obviously they might be different to me. But I'm just very driven like that. Like I have to create. I was on put on this earth to create. So that's what I'm gonna fucking do. Right, I'm gonna sip this tea now for the victory sip. I think yeah, doing it, starting it is the biggest is the biggest step, I guess, because. Everyone nowadays wants to be a YouTuber, as weird or cringy or as, like you know, unrealistic that sounds. That's that's the fact. That's reality. Like uh, when I was younger, I'm not saying like back in my days. Obviously, I'm only 18. But when I was younger, I wanted to be a footballer. I wanted to do something like that. I wanted to be a footballer. I wanted to be a rapper. So anything that's that in like that was the thing. But nowadays, I feel like more kids just want to be a YouTuber because it gives you free will to do anything you want. Because if you're a YouTuber, you can do football. Obviously, you see like the Sidemen or whatever, and all these people like they play football on um, professional stadiums around the world. 
you can do boxing as you've seen care you can branch out like all these people all these uh, uh, influence social i hate that word but social influencers do now another thing i want to talk about is like planning videos planning for me is very important because without planning there's, it doesn't hold no structure there's no foundation to your video so imagine a building without any foundation it's going to collapse the video will collapse and so yeah i see plan it in, in advance take some notes down before you do a video if even like right now i've got notes down for the podcast or if you have a laptop out or if you have a piece of even if you write on a piece of paper but a stick behind the camera and you're reading off a card or something you know and um obviously memorize it so you know what you're talking about in the video you know what you're going to do or how it's going to be edited um people always ask me what equipment now although i'm very picky with equipment you don't have to be like you honestly do that's just me because i just want it to have a certain look certain sound but for, I'll say that the, the, what I'm filming on now, quite frankly, a st or a standard vlogging camera is the Canon G7X Mark II. Or Mark I, but Mark II preferably. It's about... How's that falling then? It's about... Uh, there must, I think my house is haunted. It's about £500. Um, I've lost my trailer for now because that's just fallen. It's about £500. Well, I've got it in, a, in like a vlogger kit pack, around £500, 500 But it's one of the best investments I've had because it allowed me to make my video from just normal 1080 now, normal standard 1080 or 720 to high 1080, 60 frames per second, 4K as well as the camera does. Uh, microphone, I had a blue Yeti for a while, which does the job. It's got a new like on Twitter. Um, it just does the job. Uh, but yeah, there's loads of different mics you can get, obviously. Rode is good mics, there's shotgun mics. Uh, and I personally, I know people are going to spark debates in the comments again. I prefer Mac over Windows always. Although I understand why people use Windows, it's faster, more powerful, but for me, Mac's so simple. I have a MacBook, I think, late 2015 or something, 30, I don't know, I have a MacBook Pro, and on there, got all my software I need. I use Final Cut Pro X, you can use iMovie, you can use After Effects, Premiere Pro, Sony Vegas Pro, I mean, there's, there's a ton of, there's even some, and I don't know, if you can't afford them, that are a few hundred pound, or however much, I'm going to be honest, I didn't even pay that. I, there's loads of ways you can go through people, ask friends to, to get it free. Or there are free uh, downloads, you can, there are free programs online. I think there's like, a, there's like some versions of iMovie or other programs that are free. So it caters towards anyone if you can afford it or not. I think time is very important, starting as a small YouTuber. You need to have the time because I realise even as, gro especially growing and getting that viral video, or the video that's going to get you loads of views, that's going to get you subscribers, and then obviously eventually your first thousand, ten thousand in money monetization. You got, you need to. I feel like timing is so important. So if you are doing what I'm doing, which by the way, it's not. It's not. I know there's negative connotations around, you know, uh, hopping on the trend, but hopping on trend is the best thing you can do as long as you put your own spin on it. So example, if Avengers come out, yeah, and Avengers Endgame comes out, don't make your video and release it a week after the hype's gone. Film it way before, a week, month before, and then release it on the day it comes out, or around the week, and that that is going to spark a lot of, you know, views and uh, watch time because people are interested in that time. Same with anything, whether it's a music video, whether you're reacting to music videos, or if you're a gamer, because I know there's a lot of gamers out there as well. Because I tried gaming last year, like playing Fortnite or PUBG or CS:GO, anything like. If there's a, let's just say there's a new uh, Fortnite World Cup or new season. Live stream that shit on the day, and that's the that's the best thing about having PS4 or Xbox. You can just live stream it. You don't need that much equipment apart from the actual console. Live stream it. Set up a camera, PS4 camera, uh, and bada boom, bada bam, easy. Um, I want to tell you my routine, and it sounds like a lot, and it is a lot, quite frankly. But obviously, you can you can do as you please, as I always say. Like every, every each of their own, as I say. But my daily routine is. I would, it's not good by the way that I get up late, but I get up whatever time I want. Um, for people who don't realise, I've don't, I don't, been, been through school, bar school, went through college a bit, dropped out of college, then I went to apprenticeship, then I quit my apprenticeship to do YouTube full full time. Which, you know, it, you probably look at me thinking, is this guy an, 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 is this guy an idiot? This guy a fucking idiot? And quite frankly, yes, I am, you know, I'm, I'm impulsive in that sense, you know, in the sense that I don't just do the normal, I don't want to be stuck in a bubble. In society, but that's a different. That's for a different live conversation. But my routine, because I basically work so late, like some days I'll be up three, four, five, six o'clock, then go to bed. That I physically can't function. So I get my regular eight hours sleep. It doesn't matter. I mean, my sleeping pattern shifted, so it's not the best. But I wake up, have bre have breakfast is very important. Have your sleep is very, very important. I realised. 
uh, film videos like the other day, like it's, it's you know, plan, I mean, you can plan the day before, you can wait and think of what to do. Film videos, I film about three or four videos. If, if I get five videos in a day, that's very good because then you've got your whole week sorted. And then the rest of them days, you don't have to film, you can chill out and just edit. Uh, so get your videos uh, filmed, and then once you get filmed, you'll film your video. For me, I upload daily, which I'm going to get onto in a minute. Film a video. Uh, get, all the quick, get all the equipment out, set up the scene, whether it's this scene here, the two softbox lights, the tripod, the camera, the microphone, all of that, set it all up, press record, and then once you finish recording, then you've got to put it into, you've got to export it, put it into software, you know, Final Cut Pro X, edit it, usually for me, it takes this, it won't take that long because it's quite raw, but normal videos take two to four hours, sometimes five, or like a whole day or week to edit, depending on what it is, if it's a project, like my Love Island, faking to go into Love Island video, that took a week, or maybe like two weeks to to do because yeah like that was a lot of planning probably two weeks in total to actually film everything edit but you know usually it takes a couple of hours to edit and then post it and then promoting promoting people underestimate so much because sometimes you got you, you don't just put your stuff out there and think oh yeah it'll get seen if it's good you literally sometimes you have to cater and you got to push towards them people so people you're targeting whether it being with your demographics 18 to 24 like I think a lot of mine are if it's younger or it's older. Promote on, uh, I'm in a lot of Facebook groups as well, uh, so I'll put a link in the description to a couple that you can join. There'll be a lot of links in the description in this, like, to help you guys, whatever you want to do um, with YouTube. But yeah, communities are very good to join, it helps you understand, other, look at other channels. Uh, but promoting on your social medias, i.e. all your social media platforms, and I know this because, take it from me as semi-expert, you know, because I studied this and also I went to apprenticeship doing digital marketing. Social media, social media platforms such as Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, um, link, even link, but LinkedIn for business inquiries only. But these sort of things, whether you're doing TikTok, I'm not sure. Cringe, I know, but some people do it. But fair play because you're getting spread and money. But yeah, post on all these platforms. Uh, use the hashtags because that's how. Because if on Twitter, if you really, if you post something, only the people that follow you or you follow them or whatever, they follow you, they're gonna see it. If you put hashtags, the whole world are gonna see it. But it's not even the whole world. Is specified and narrowed down to the people that are searching for similar things with the hashtag. So if it's hashtag um, England versus like ENG versus Uruguay URG, then that's and your videos about sports or something, then that's going to get a lot of attention. Uh, doing short videos as well, short form content on social media is very key. 30 second, 10 second videos, they could go viral. Uh, but yeah, so moving on to the actual video now, long form content. Nowadays, favours. I'm sorry, YouTube recommend it more, and like it's seen in the James Charles Tatty beef, even though whether it's fake or real, uh, obviously, I wouldn't just say start beef for no reason, uh, although it does get views. But 45 minute video, same as the KSI Side Dead, you think 45 an hour minute video, and they're getting 40 50 million views. Same as saying Shane Dawson's series, uh, series, a couple hours long, an hour long. That's why documentaries and podcasts like these, which I'm doing now, brings you up that watch time. Your watch time is essential and so important uh, in growing your channel and being and for, for a small YouTuber to progress to essentially like where you want to be and where the position you want to be in uh, because the more watch time the more they think you're interested in and then they binge watch all your videos that's why series are good because you can watch one after another and it's almost like when you watch Netflix you watch one after another or you watch YouTube and you watch one video and it recommends you another so the biggest way you're gonna get recommended is not what I'm doing I know I'm going to get to this now. So uploading every day, is it good? Is it healthy? It's not healthy, I'll tell you that for a fact now, because I've been very down this whole year doing it, as much as it seems like I'm having fun. Filming's fun, but editing all by myself, which I want to eventually get my own editor. I'm filming all by myself, and sometimes my dad films, but it's very tiring. And you shouldn't do it, because when you upload every day, and especially with me, you don't put as much energy into video, whereas if you had a whole, if you upload every week, or once every two weeks, you have more, effort to put into one project and it, it shows because proven on my channel I upload a video every day and I get a couple hundred views like 50 to 20 I like I mean 90 100 views average 100 views and when I put all my energy into two week project my Love Island video I get 600 700 views and same as the other ones that are like at over a, a couple thousand views that I have on my channel and the reason why you shouldn't what I do I look at people like KSI I look at Logan Paul David Dobrik I look at all these people and I think they can do anything boxing fight like boxing, football, uh, rapping, music, they do everything, so why can't I branch out and do that? And that's a wrong mindset I need to have, and I know I need to change it, and I will next year, and this goes on to my pride and ego right now. 
And the reason why I'm uploading every year is wrong. Do not do it. I'm take it from me. I'm just getting experience, and so I can. If I feel like if I have to get if I get through the hard nitty gritty work, then I can handle anything in the YouTube because I don't want to take it lightly. So I'm going all in, and I want to actually say that once once upon a time I uploaded 365 days of the year. Because as you know, all this year I've uploaded every day, and it's going to continue. And you're going to see people prove me wrong. And I love when I say I love proving people wrong, not in a malicious way, but just to myself that if people tell you can't do something, and even I had my doubts at the start of the year, I might make it after three or four days and stop. But I carried on, carried on, carried on. Yeah, it fuels it. The haters actually fuel me to make more content. So what I'm saying is YouTube won't recommend you if you're doing what I'm doing. So if they, because YouTube will look at my video, how can they suggest my video? They won't suggest my video to people if they see I make one video I'm making a podcast like this, another video I'm reacting to Logic song, another video I'm reacting to KSI song, another video I'm making music, another video I'm on Reddit, and then next is a skit. Next is a vlog, like they don't know because there's so many things. If you narrow it down to a niche, if you only do comedy skits, like Gus Johnson's a good example, or like if you do Jack Mate type videos, like commentary channel, if you do one specific thing and you have a series, then people will binge watch your videos because if they like, because some people on my channel might like the podcast, the older people out there or the more mature, or just, just down to earth people that want to watch this, and other people might want to watch the more, not, I want to say childish because my videos aren't childish, childish, yeah. Um, childish really. Uh but my like if they might not they might in, enjoy the podcast they might not enjoy the vlogs or challenges I do. So narrow it down to niche, whatever that may be, whether it's gaming as well, because gaming is if you look on like Google AdWords and stuff, the the word gaming is just increasing, increasing, increasing. I've been talking a lot, I know. I wanna open these now actually because uh they're mine, you know, not for you. We can't have it I'm joking, but these are Probably, in, like I said in the start, the nicest chocolates in the history of, of anything. So comment down below. They're definitely my favourite anyway. Uh, another thing I want to talk about is uh, schedule and structure. If you have times when you're going to film, you actually will film. Because if you say to yourself, oh, some, sometime today, um, I'm going to film. Oh my lord, oh, I'm just, I almost just kicked the cat. He jumped and, it, oh wow, I was stretching my leg. Sometimes if you don't, without urgency, uh, does, no, yeah. But that yeah, without urgency, there was there nothing gets done. So it's same thing about global warming. Like if without any urgency, nothing gets done. But that's another, another conversation about the climate change. Uh, what I'm saying, so if you say to yourself, "Oh, I'm gonna film sometime today," you'll wait and wait and wait. You'll procrastinate, <laughs> and you won't be productive, and you won't get it done. If you say, "3 p.m. today, I'm filming my podcast episode," then 5:30, I'm editing. 7:30, I'm publishing. You will do it because you feel like you need to do it at this time. So it puts a lot of structure into it. Um, I would say collaborations are so, so, so important. So important because, and that's what I've realised recently, and I haven't collabed as much, but I'm, there's loads of things coming up. And quick message before we go into this. Any YouTuber out there watching this, I would love to collab with you. No matter who you are, no matter what position, with, whether you've got 10 subs or you've got 10,000 subs, I would love to collab with you because both parties win. Let's say you both got 200 subs or 100 subs. Them 100... Well, so you link, you both make a video, one for their channel, one for your channel, or a couple. I, I always like to do a couple, so it's, you know, get productive day. So you have a day where you film on a Saturday or Sunday, you get loads of videos done between you both, then in your video, you link them. So all your subscribers, or let's just say 20% of them subscribe to them, they get an extra 20 subs, which will, they might recommend to another, and so on, you know what I mean? You grow slowly like that. And it's always good to do videos with people. I'm busy. I'm contradicting myself, I'm quite loaded with this podcast. I've got two seats here, so if you want to fill up these seats, if you want to be a guest, or if you want to apply, I guess, to be the co-host of my podcast, then I'm more than welcome uh, to do that. But you got you got to literally comment on this video or DM me on one of my social medias, at Nzingi Mahan, always the same as all my um, social medias. And yeah, we'll get this done, we'll get collab done. I realised as well that videos, like Howard is not really... Like, it's a good example. So Howard, one of my best friends, he, like, he doesn't, he doesn't mind being, one of the people doesn't mind being in the videos, but if he had a choice, he's probably like not bothered or he doesn't really want to be in that many. So I, I'd stopped asking him because I could tell that, you know, he's not, like, he just doesn't want to, not, not comfortable in that thing. Like, he, that's not for him, that's fine. That like, I understand that, same with Zach. Completely understand that and other friends that like, don't want to film videos because that's not for them, like, you know. I always would want to try and get them to do it because they're good on camera. I think in a way it makes it authentic, but when you're filming with people, if you have a click, it's like an energy, and it's more like you just have a laugh, and it's just more fun, and enjoyable. The last thing we're talking about um, is 
the brand. Uh, well, actually, about before brand, we're going to talk about the mindset and mental health. Mental health for YouTube. If you keep going out, you'll burn out. It's quite simply. And I'm at a point now where it's not healthy, but I see everything as content. Everything. I mean, like if I go to the park, I think, how can I film that? I went to golf it to golf. I played crazy golf today. The first time in a long time this year, and where I haven't brought my camera, I thought I'll leave it at home and actually enjoy the moment. So you've got to have the mindset that. It's a good mindset, I guess, because you're always thinking. I'm always thinking of ideas, always jotting notes down on my phone. I've got hundreds and hundreds of notes on my phone. Um, but yeah, the mindset you've got to have as well is that you are the best. Like, if you see yourself as a small YouTuber, you are going to be a small YouTuber. It's like P uh, PMA, positive. Oh. <coughs> I don't know what I'm going for, I didn't even eat a thing. Positive energy, positive mindset. Um, and yeah, law of attraction as well, I believe a lot in that. So if you put energy out there that you are the best, you will become the best, i.e. getting equipment, how your videos look, and act like you are on top, so you have to cater to your audience, and your your competition is important, But and that's why I distract you and stuff, but not just that, and also your audience is the most important thing. And I love my audience, so everyone everyone knows what's up, all right? And my audience are like, my fans are like, almost, I say fans, ironic, I got like soldiers, they are the warriors, all right? They'll stick by me no matter what. And that's what you've got to build that relationship with your audience. That's why I always spend time to reply to all comments. I'm talking about your brand. Like this, this is obviously my hoodie. And also comment down below, Born Entertainer, all of that. If you buy some of my merch, because I want to make more colours, I want to make more designs. But merch, like having branding, like even this mic here has got my logo on it. I realise that I've talked so much that the tea's gone cold. But having branding on different things gives it a more authentic and professional look. Like you, I don't really. It sounds weird, but it wasn't It was that back in the day. It was just about creativity, and it still is now, and, and like how good the content is. But nowadays, it is about presentation, how a video looks, how it sounds, and that's just the way it is, and you've got to play the game. The YouTube algorithm is a big thing. It's like scary word, but I've been to VidCon. I've talked to people like, I think it's Rob something, the, the quite big guy. Oh, I don't know if you can say big guy in 2019, but the, you know, like... He's a quite big guy, you know, and he was like, he's like the one of the CEOs and owners of YouTube. YouTube uh, YouTube algorithm, there is a, a YouTube algorithm, you've got to learn to play it, i.e. SEO, search engine optimization, PPC, paper clicks, uh, keywords, all this stuff, your tags, your thumbnail and title is probably, I'm going to say this now, the most essential thing to get your views. Look at Mr. Beast, he's like the golden boy of YouTube at the moment. Hundreds, millions, 25, 20 million views a video he probably gets, and more. The first day he gets like 6 million views, 7 or 10 million views. The levels he goes to are insane, but obviously and not everyone's like that. Some people just want to be content, they want to do little vlogs or gaming, which is completely fine, I understand that, because not everyone wants to be this big entertainer, but this is just for me anyway. So the YouTube algorithm, you do have to play it, you do have to hop on some trends at sometimes. <sighs> Brilliant, the camera just cut out. But yeah, as I was saying, capitalise on opportunities is like almost like my catchphrase, I think I always think in my head, um, because if it's not my opportunity, like, go for it. Uh, it's there once a lifetime opportunity. Don't mm -hmm. think about what people want to think about you. And yeah, going back to the brand, um, if you got to build your brand and it builds your audience in a sense and they feel like you're there attached to some sort of group, like it's like Nike. I mean, this hoodie here is better than Nike. So comment down below if you would cop something with this. That's going to be pretty much it for today's video. I'll leave it a lot. The last little message I'll leave you on is, 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 is I can't remember who the quote was by. I'll put it on the screen now. But dreams don't work unless you do. So if you work today, you're one step closer to your dream. They always say, if you're standing on ground zero, the only way to look is up. It's another good quote as well. I think Anthony Joshua said that. And it's true because no matter what position you are, you can, you're always going to get better. So thank you guys ever so much for watching. I haven't even eaten a single one of these. Um, comment down below if you do want to have a collab with me. Wait, hang on. We just, we've got to try one of these. These are actually so nice. Oh, the white ones. Mmm. Mm. I'm sorry, it's not turning into a mukbang or uh, it's in my video. But thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy this podcast, leave a like, subscribe down below. Turn up post notification bell so you get notified every time I upload one of these videos, which is quite cool. Uh, put a W in the chat for my hair because the trim is looking okay. Comment down below for what your thoughts on this are. If you have anything, other advice for me or other people. Tell me your situation. If you have any questions, be sure to definitely ask, ask them. I will reply to you. Thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you in the next episode of the Underground Podcast. And I'll see you guys in a bit.